Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975. Welcome to another ZX Spectrum versus Commodore 64 comparison video, as I like to call it Playground Wars. In this video we'll be taking a look at 1985's epic arcade game Commando released by Capcom. We'll be playing it on your two usual suspects, although it was released on absolutely every one of them. And there's a NES version as well, which is weird because it's like the Bionic Commando um, version on the NES where it takes a different route. Some argue makes it a better game, some say they would have rather had the arcade game. I remember when this came out and it got a review in Sinclair User and they just gave it five stars out of five and said it was an absolutely amazing port. As hard as the arcade but a perfect representation of it in 48k Spectrum form. This is the 128k ROM, which for some reason I've never managed to get my hands on before because I have played this before, but I want it in this comparison video because it is such a perfect game to compare against its Commodore 64 version. Dean Swain very kindly sent me this ROM from Retro Asylum, so big thanks to Dean. Now, <clears throat> on the Commodore stipulations, on the Commodore 64 version, I will be playing the original release by Elite. Yes, this was made by those guys in the bottom right hand corner. It was released in 1986. They also made Space Harrier. They made loads of amazing games on the Spectrum. Commodore, Amstrad, Amiga, Atari ST, and they were pretty much one of the best houses back then for doing arcade conversions. But I will be playing their original 1986 version of Commando, which is missing levels. Um, I did recently play the 2015 um, homebrew updated version of it, which changes some of the colours to make them more accurate to the arcade and puts the levels back in. But that's not fair to compare that to the Spectrum, because that's a phenomenal port, because it wasn't around at the time. Now, <clears throat> I said this before, I'm sorry, war gives me a gacky throat. Um, I said I've got a pacifist throat. I said this before and I'll say it again. Um, I, I absolutely loved this game back in the day, but I sucked at it because it has no auto fire up to them, and I'm pretty sure it didn't even work when you used it on the quick shot too. So my brother would hammer the M key, because you'll see the keys I'm going to use in a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. War again, gacky throw. It is balls hard. Balls to the walls hard. Right. Um, so hopefully I can get far enough on both versions for you to get a feel and judge it for yourself. K. Okay. Keys. Keys are champions. Up, down, left, right, fire. A grenade. Right, S to start. Don't drop out of a chopper. Are we surprised with that? Colour palette? A bit, well, a bit spectrum -y. A little bit of attribute clash. But wait till you see, particularly when I get to the end of the level, shouldn't have said that out loud, grenade! How many sprites? Shit. This can put on the screen at once with no noticeable slowdown, he says. But look, they jump off the, you know, the rock formations. The colours may be a bit pants. There may be a little bit of sort of screen tearing and shit. But you've got to remember, with the exception of the sound, this was a 48k game originally. Oh, there was a 48k game, but did everything the 128k game did apart from the music. And all the levels were there anyway. You didn't have to multi-load them. Got to save him. I get stuck on the rocks, though. Um, yeah, I think you just get points from extra life. But yeah, so the fact that you didn't have to load shit in was incredibly impressive. Now, there'll be a motorbike oink, on the bridge who starts throwing grenades. And this tunnel's always a pain because you can't see what's directly in front of you. I'm just going to grenade it. And then he shoots. Same on the Commodore. It's a bastard, that tunnel. It's a little bit worse on the Commodore, but we'll get to that. Keep getting the grenades. You do have to. It's not like a fancy thing just to, you know, lure you in as a trap. You will need grenades. But, yeah, the controls... I mean, I think the graphics are amazing. Oh, look! The controls are sublime. Right. I find stay here and just grenade. Points for that one, he's their commander. Yoink! Ooh, your trick here is just to run around. It's like real war. Sweet! I've got a gameplay of this years ago where I pretty much almost completed it. I have got a gameplay of the 2015 Commando SE edition on the Commodore if you want to see it, or I cheat to use Infinite Lives. 
because it's so hard. And I had to play that on my Commodore 64 Mini, which the joystick is small. You know that if you've watched any of my videos. It's so unforgiving. I, I had to put Infinite Lives on just to see how far we could get. For some reason, you can't kill any of the vehicles. There's pits here. Uh, see what I mean now about the number of sprites on the screen at once? No discernible slowdown. That's incredibly impressive for a machine that's 48k. I've said it before and I'll say it again. To put that into perspective for a game that's this impressive, 48k is less than your avatar picture or your avatar or your actual, you know, profile picture on Facebook. My god, we've come a long way, but my god, that's why these games are still fun and impressive to play. He says fun. But it's fun, it's just balls on, it doesn't hold your hand, does it? I think you should have just called it Accurate War Simulator. Ah, shies and balls. And there's no continues, because why would there be? That music is tasty and delicious. Right, see, because if you put that bloke on a rock directly behind there, it was a little bit more forgiving. I say a little bit, but not massively. Look at it though. All right, the colour's a bit funky, and there's attribute clash. But you'd have attribute clash if you only had 48k of memory. Right, you're probably not going to see past here, because look. Yep. Shizzle balls are going to hit the fan. Oh. I could have probably put infinite lives in, but where's the fun in that? Right, go on then. Oh yeah, they come out of everywhere. Alright, there's a little bit of slowdown now. To be fair, that's probably quite useful. I almost had it. I almost had it. Wendy, I can fly. Oh shit, you forget to move at the last minute. One more go and then we'll jump to the Commodore 64 version. I do like this title screen. Was it like this? I didn't think it was like this in the arcade, so they went really quite accurate. Bands. There we go. One more go. S to start. But yeah, I mean, this brings back. I don't just think this is amazing port because I got member berry goggles about it. Because it is. It brings back loads of memories. Like I said, the colour never stands a chance in that department against the Commodore. But the sprites are so sharp. Like I said, there's so many of them on the screen. There's so much going on. And you do kind of stand a chance. Yay! I saved Chuck Norris because. The controls are so tight. Some of it seems a bit unfair. Like, that bit there. Where clearly I was stuck on something. It does that on the Commodore, you wait and see. So at least it's consistent in the, the little bits that are broken, I guess I should say. I better get some grenades. All your, all your inventory shit's at the top of the screen. Nothing new there. Seriously, I cannot, if you've never played a Spectrum, you know, like from outside, you like Kingdom and Curious. Look up Elite. I mean, I've got gameplays of lots of their cool shit. Because they were the kings of arcade conversions. Does that count? Oh, they really, really were. Now, I mean, on all systems, but I'm just, you know, I've got member berry goggles about Spectrum. Got your boss. Look at him. And the other one ran off because he's a coward. Or smart. Right, let's jump onto the Commodore 64 version, which, as I said, will be the original version. Yoink! So here we go with Commando on the Commodore 64. Now, the quick thing I have to say is I'm not playing this on my Commodore 64 Mini, so this is ever so slightly a bit glitchy with the graphics, but there's a reason for that, very good reason. If you expect me to stand any chance of getting past the first level to make it a fair comparison version, then I can play it with that joystick. I'm going to play it with my Wiimote turned sideways. Basically, there ain't no, a snowball chance in hell, or a liberal's chance in prison that I'm making it off maybe even halfway through the first stage without using infinite lives because I do have the gameplay of the SE edition so yeah please forgive that but as you can tell right off the bat obviously much 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 more colour at the expense of sharpness that's the Commodore 64 thing and the amazing SID chip music which absolutely wipes the floor with the A chip on the Zelic Spectrum 128K but don't get me wrong I still really like that music also I get to use two buttons on this one for fire one for grenade which means I don't have to hold down 
fire uh, two grenades, which would have been on the Commodore 64 Mini. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not whining about that. It's just, I love my Commodore 64 Mini, but I wanted to make this a fair comparison. Obviously, it doesn't have all the levels, but let's get into it. Yeah, life and stuff like that is at the bottom of the screen. No sound effects, just music. Standard Commodore fair. Uh, it looks really, really nice. The sprites, you know, suffer a lack of sharpness, but you could argue with the color palette they chose on the spectrum, that doesn't really show up how much sharper the sprites are, or detail, I should say. But one thing I will say on this is, as I mentioned, you get stuck on everything. It's like everything is made out of Velcro, and this bridge bit, You get stuck on something just outside of the bridge, I can't even work out what it is, and then you've got to <clears throat> ooh, run past him. I, I just made it, I just contradicted myself. I haven't got any good age. Shit, so you've got to run past him because they'll shoot you straight down the line. But yeah, obviously right off the start, you can tell that this bears a much stronger and a pretty good resemblance indeed to the arcade for an 8-bit machine. It's, it, it looks absolutely bang on. You know, maybe the lack of levels or the levels, because you know, it's not like that, it's incredibly short, but the levels that it's missing, is that to do with how accurate they made it? I'm just gonna style there. And, Balls. I was just going to say, I thought I found a weakness, but no. But yeah, there's no not denying. I mean, this was this was revered across the board. I was pressing the wrong button for grenades. I'm a tit. Yeah, this was an incredibly, incredibly impressive port. And it is, you know, missing levels a lot. And obviously, in that version, they changed um, uh, the, the SE version. So I do recommend you checking out some of the colour choices to make it resemble the arcade more. But you know what? I would be more, I mean, I was more than happy with the ZX Spectrum version, but will you stop coming out already? But I would have been blown away with this. Can't believe I made it off stage one. What is it, five ordinarily? Sound effects at the same time would be nice, but yeah, colour palettes, watch out for Oh, he's crazy, he's tiny. What is he? And there's the Batmobile. That's a bit pants. And we have the most underwhelming grenades ever. Oh, and that's down to me. Uh, right, but yeah. Graphically, I mean the Spectrum. Like I said, I like the Spectrum. I like the sharpness. The colour palette doesn't do it any choice, because these are chunky sprites. But the colours in this, uh, they're amazing. They're brilliant. It, it does really give it the arcade feel. Particularly like when they jump off those you know, rock faces there. I'm going this way, because I always get stuck. Yay! Why do I feel like I've achieved something? But yeah. Like I said, I never had a combo back in the day, but this was one, another one of the games I really wanted to try. Got it! Oh, look at that! Oh, see, every time you think you've done alright, it slaps you in the face. I find the screen more claustrophobic, and like I said, it's like you're made out of Velcro and you just stick to shit. Like I'm a statically charged soldier. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Plus, the level feels shorter. I'm clutching at straws. <laughs> but no, look, honestly, oh, glitchy, glitchy. Oh, fuck. Come on. Right. Were there any sort of up the screen lone run gun man games like this in the arcade before Commando came out? I think Ikari Warriors come out. Well, you could argue that's different because this didn't have a twisty joystick, did it? This was a man's game. A real man's game. Well, I got off level one. You know, it's a start. Controls, are, I'm going to say this, the controls are nowhere near. Ignore the static clinging shit. I feel like a sheet of bounce in the tumble dryer. The controls are nowhere near as tight as the Spectrum. That's, that's one thing. I mean, I know, obviously, these videos are very much what you grew up with, is the version you like. That's a pain in the ass, I just noticed. If you want to grenade, you have, it, it, it automatically fires up. That's not just a bit, Pants. That's broken. I can't lob grenades from right to left or left to right. Right, one more go. Yeah, like I said, that kind of, you know, graphic glitches, that's because I'm playing this on my emulator. I'm playing it with Frodo on my Wii. I have still yet to work out a way to get a control pad working on my C64 Mini. 
And like I said, you know, I'll play most games on there in the comparison stakes, but some games like this, it ain't gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? See, look, far left, automatically up. Really? And you can't blow him up. Ooh! Sticky rocks. Ew. Yoink. It kind of makes your grenade less effective. I can't remember now on the special. I'm pretty sure I could fire from right to left. I've got an extra life. I'm just postponing my death ever so slightly. Place the place the Spectrum version is way more playable than this. That's one thing I can say is definitely on this. Whether you uh, you know side with the Spectrum or Commodore or not, I'm telling you now, give it a go. The Spectrum version is way more playable. You ain't. It wasn't. Seems quite easy to get lives. Hey! I'm broke. Never mind their enemy lines. Game's broken me. Right, stick to the right, ignore the Jeep and the Batmobile. Stay away. Oh, and the bike. These holes, because they are beyond. Really? Ah. What? For remote control cars, they certainly are dangerous. Ooh. I don't know. Oh, I can see. Didn't have that on the spectrum, did we? That was nice of it. Oh, water. The water effect obviously is far superior. That was a given. Oh. This game is relentless. Even with a joystick that works, this game is relentless. And obviously I'm not the world's greatest game player. There's a trick. They can only fire down the screen. Oh well, budget cuts and all that. Oh, I call it quits there. Commando, ZX Spectrum versus Commodore 64. The Commodore looks more like the arcade. Absolutely does. Music's far more impressive. But the controls don't hold a fart to the Spectrum. In the looks and sound department, Commodore has it in a heartbeat all day long. But you need tight controls, playability, and that gets stuck to the rocks. It means, do you know what? Controversial. Playability and being ever so slightly less broken, I guess. I'm giving it to Spectrum. But anyway, as always, I'd love to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. They're both balls hard as each other. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.